Game of Thrones, here we go, still looking for that male heir, and a lot of you have pointed out, and I, I, I didn't entirely realise that this was a mechanic, I'll be honest with you, that you cannot convert religions of characters by educating them. Kind of a massive pain in the ass. There is actually a game rule here, let me see if I can find it, um, that allows you to change cultures. Now, I've disabled that, so there is sort of standard cultural conversion. That guy's might, you might have been talking about that. I'm not entirely sure that that is the case. So, if we cannot convert over to High Valerian, um, what I would do then is I'll just have a son set him to have the heritage focus, and then we'll just manually change it, because I feel like that's a fair trade, right? Um, I actually can't see it now, but there is somewhere in these rules a cultural-based uh, restriction, essentially. So if, if you control a province for long enough that's not your culture, you can't convert it. But to make up for that, you, you get less sort of penalties with ruling different cultures. There we are. So province cultures will be converted the same as vanilla, but apparently we still don't have the access to convert other characters or our own children. Kind of a massive pain in the ass there, but hey, like I said, we'll just take heritage anyway and pretend that it worked as intended. So, what's the plan? Well, one of you pointed out in yesterday's episode that the Dothraki uh, sort of horde here, a horde of Toko, completely wiped out Volantis. Now, like I said, Volantis is what the Byzantine Empire was to the Roman Empire, in the sense that they considered themselves the successor to Valeria. In fact, if we go to uh, Volantis here, you can see they're a Sossi Valerian, and they are still uh, the Valerian religion. So, they are sort of not necessarily true Valerian, but they do have a, that, that very sort of heavy Essos influence, sort of generic free cities influence there. But they would have been one of the biggest hurdles to reforming our own sort of freehold. I'm really glad they were taken apart then by the Dothraki, but what I'm saying is we could move in and, and steal all this for ourselves, boys. Because not only that, that is the home of the Lord of Light religion, the Great Plaza. This is the equivalent of Rome for, for Catholicism, right? This is what we want. If we can vassalize this dude, it says Red Priest there, but if we go to the religion tab, you can see that he is the, the head priest there. Temple of the Lord of Light. Now, what can we do with the Lord of Light? So we can request an excommunication and request a divorce. But obviously, having this dude vassalized would give us a lot of sway amongst the religions. So that might be a good plan. The issue is to get over to Volantis. Either way, we have to carve a way through this Dothraki horde, which I'm not a big fan of, seeing how powerful they are. And they were the ones that basically dismantled this. Or... We go through um, the sort of ruins of Valeria. So the Howling Bogs, Draconis, and Anagaria there. Not a big fan of that, going to be honest with you. So what we're going to do in the meantime, I think the Hermetic Society, the equivalent of here, the Citadel, is definitely a good call. Write a magnum opus, actually see what we can get out of that. I'm not sure if it is very similar to the base commons. You'd imagine it's not, right, seeing as it's... Uh, the rest of the mod is very thorough with how it uh, changes the society. So this might be a similar thing. But testing this out should be a first portal core. Because this, is this I'm hoping, will be pretty cool. Something I've never seen before anyway. And then while we're doing that, we'll go for some of our focuses as well. Obviously try and have a fairly decent son. It's going to be my main focus to have a son with the genius and attractive traits. Wife is also attractive. So we've got a pretty high chance of having a child inherit that. But passing down genius should be our number one priority. Until we get a genius son, I don't really want to move off seduction too much. In the meantime, building ourselves up, obviously going to be very important. Maybe even flipping over to business after we've done the whole scholarship thing, just so we can join the Citadel. And maybe sticking with business for the rest of this character's life. We could also start preparing our forces. Man, I... The thing is, slave raiding is so overpowered, right? It, it's so incredibly overpowered in the sense that it gives you so many buffs, and by not having access to it, we are really going to limit ourselves. We've seen the level 5 slave labor. Oh my god, they're still earhead men. That's so weird. It's the only culture pack that's fucked up is the, is the Gishkari face pack. It's so weird. Um, yes, slave labor gives you so many bonuses. We've seen it last time. Minus 50% to build time, minus 50% to build cost. But it goes against our character. You know, this, this former slave, this free man who worked his way up. Maybe he wouldn't be adverse to taking other cultures as slaves. So he wouldn't go for a Valyrian culture as our slaves because that goes against what we're trying to do. But maybe he wouldn't be too much against, you know enslaving the slavers, the Mehranese, the Yunkai, the, the Astapori, the, the Gishkar, and I guess Karth as well, I think, is a traditional slaver culture. I'll have to take a look here. But seeing as Valeria itself is a traditional slaving culture, as it says there, I wouldn't be too adverse to doing that. It might be a good idea to try and launch some slave raids on these places and see if we can't grab ourselves some, uh, some helping hands here and there. Can we do that against the Dothraki? I think it's just any... Holy shit, we can. It's just any foreign culture, isn't it? Seduce Taco. Maybe not. Um, what do we need, then? So they have to be... Coastal. Oh, yeah. Target is coastal. Right. Okay. So we could go for... I mean, where would be a good place to attack? Obviously, we're not going to go for Gogasos, but A, because they're incredibly powerful. Um, B, because they are technically, I suppose, Valyrian. They are Gogasossi, which is a descendant of Valyria. So those boys are exempt. Honestly, Karth seems like a good choice. I'm not sure why Karth has splintered apart like this. It's probably something to do with the whole top box buff thing. But we could go and attack and slave raid these dudes instead. 
Um, Tonic's got, yeah, we still can't do it. Oh, we need to be a slave trader, so I have to join the slave trade? We already have slaves in our camps. Do we really? Hang on. Maybe the, maybe the province starts, oh, it actually starts with some. I think I pointed that out last episode in hindsight. Right, interesting. So we could do that. This is very strange. I'm not sure why we have the ability to elect someone as the head of the Empire of New Valyria. That's very strange, because it is prompting me to nominate a successor, which is, is is odd, because obviously there isn't anything in line to that. Um, that that empire does not exist. I guess we'll just ignore it for now. Um, yeah, weird. Why would that be asking us to do that? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, my wife, Shara, is pregnant. Incredible. So, as some of you pointed out last episode, I got the wrong character. Um, I said this was the one that flew to Sothorios, and actually, actually, you know, it wasn't. It was completely different. I was right, however, that it is one of the daughters of... Um, one of the bastard daughters, one of the many bastard daughters of Aegon, uh, the unworthy, Aegon V, who had many, many different, uh, children. Uh, those of you who watch the show might recognize, uh, Brynden Bloodraven here, the three-eyed raven, the one that trains Bran to Greenseers. You can see their green dreams, and apparently Crow follows him around. So this is the, uh, the Greenseer there. He's also old gods as well, which is a nice little, uh, nice little addition. So she's one of those many bastards there, and was apparently in love with, the uh, with the three-eyed raven. So I was, I was getting my characters confused. To be honest, all the Targaryens look the same, and they're all named the same as well. That's not my fault. Do you want to buy our wife something nice? Five gold. Well, to be honest with you, I'm going to say no. Because I'm saving up the gold so that we can go on a foreign tour this episode and see what we can find out there in the world. Might get some cool armor. Oh, my save ally has given birth to a child. She named him Rolly. Great, thank you. Um, what I want to try and do, like I said, is go out, get some good weapons and armor. At least get some maybe combat experience I figured could be valuable for this dude. He's only got ten martial. He's also in a completely untrained fighter. So that's not a bad idea. We're going to flatter our wife. She doesn't need new clothes. We actually can't afford it at all. Oh shit. A son. This is good. I want to save about 100 gold because that would give us the best, um, sort, sort of the best tour for, for our money's worth. You can save up 150, but that for us is quite a lot of cash things. We're only making three gold per month. Tainar Zaparian. He's a genius. <gasps> We've done it. There was no clever edits there. I'm telling you. This, this is, this is incredible. Tainar, terrible name. Um, what have we got? We've got Paparian Zaparian. You are going to be called, um, I feel like I have to do this right. A lot of people pointed out last episode. I was saying the name Anus Targaryen, right? Spell A-E-N-Y-S. And a lot of you said that I was calling him Anus, as in uh, A-U, A-A-N-U-S. So we are going to call him... <laughs> Should I call him Anus or actually like Anus, the, the Valyrian name? I'm going to go with Anus because you guys think I pronounce it the same anyway and this way I won't get demonetized. So we're going to do that. We've had a son, Anus Superian. Excellent. Uh, which one am I saying? You're gonna have to leave that up to yourself to decide. What do we want to go for this kid then? Um, probably just thrift, right? Play it tall for- oh man, I wanted to give it to you to heritage. Shit. Um, send to the Temple of Relor. Oh, nice! We can disinherit, we can make them take the vows. That's a nice feature for this religion. Um, wife, turn my son- oh, shit, we can seduce our wife? What sort of nonsense is that? Uh, wife, turn my son into a traditional good High Valerian, teach him the ways of your people, um, and the ways that have been forgotten by- by the Illyrians. She will be mine. Uh, it's a little bit late for that, but we might as well try it anyway. Meet in my room, my lady. Let our love grow. Hey, that's made our lives a lot easier. Hopefully many more children will come of that. Sweet. How old is she? 40. Obviously, the attractive genius son would be the the, the, the best thing we could get out of this. I don't think it's going to happen too much. Now that we've got a genius son, I'm kind of happy, like I said, to move away into something else. Um, ignore him. I'm Captain Trait Humble, and also I would like to go on this little trip that we've got going on. So, what's next? Ten of Dragon Egg, holy shit. I feel like I have to do it, right? Um, improved combat ability, probably not a bad plan. I was talking about that a second ago. Create a treasury. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go create treasury. Because when we're on our little adventure, when we're on our foreign tour, there is a high chance of getting a weapon or armor. And then we'll also go for the business focus whenever the hell we can get that. Oh my god, two years time. We'll go for the business focus whenever we can do that so that we can earn enough money to obviously go on our tour and buy any trinkets we find. That we killed two birds with one stone. Well, there we go. That's, there's some story there for you, uh, you book nerds, you Game of Thrones book nerds. King Aerys Blackfire. Oh, sorry, just regular a Aerys Blackfire. It's news from King's Island, apparently. Um, Aerys Blackfire demanded a trial by combat from his captor, King Aelor Targaryen, but was slain by Brynden Targaryen. So that is that the end of the Blackfire house already? Oh, seven living members. Jesus, there are way more. Of course, Damon, Damon got around a bit, didn't he? So the last surviving member of House Blackfire was Malus the Monstrous, who was killed by Barristan Salmi, actually, of all characters. So that's not for another, like, 50 years' time or so from, from this date in particular. Father, father, cause... Oh, God, I forgot I called her this. Called De Aeceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceraceracerace
Copyright, copyright, do not steal my memes. Um, neglect your responsibilities for De He Saraceratus' sake. Or sake. She might be a drunkard. Lord Proparian opinion of her changed by 70. Wow. Um, 20%. Why would I not do that? Neglect her? Why would I do that? What's the downside to doing it? Neglect my responsibilities. I don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, let's see what the outcome of this is. Boom. We get in the trait kind, which is incredible. Um, I don't think she got anything out of it. She might have got some stewardship. I wasn't really paying attention. She, like I said, she's the backup character, right? If anything happens to our son, or if we really want to metagame it, we flip it to Agnetic, Cognetic, and play as the daughter instead. Get in the trait charitable. Honestly, charitable's good. We didn't get it, which is a real shame. Oh, she actually did change clothes. Did you see that? That is some crazy attention to detail there. Well done, game. And once again, Shiera is pregnant. Excellent. Right, let's go for that genius, attractive son. Uh, Daenerys is apparently plotting. What, what are you plotting against? What is this? She wants to become spy master. Um, we could, well, she's clearly not doing a very freaking good job. So we're going to throw her in prison. And then I'm going to exile her? Am I allowed to do that? Um, we have control of everything, don't we? Yeah, we absolutely do. Okay, so I could exile her. Um... Although she hasn't got any gold. Does anybody ra want to ransom her? My god, this interface is horrible. Um, yeah, does anybody want to ransom you, though? Call her for trial. Could enslave her. Although she is a courtier, so we would increase our tyranny there. Let's just leave her in there for a while. Let her think about what she's done. Right, okay, so we've almost got enough gold. Oh, shit. Oh, no, he wants to buy... Oh, wants to purchase one of my slaves. Um, he lays a hand on Ham? Harm? Is his name Ham? Harm? Harm Odysseus' shoulder. Excellent. He is my treasurer, though. Um, we could sell him for 40 coins. No less. Please. <gasps> he agreed to it. Holy shit. Well, that's bad because we're missing a treasure. But hey, that means we can now go on the, the longest foreign tour, which is great. Um, where is that then? Go on foreign tour. Uh, oh my god. Is it... Can we only do that if we're younger than 30? Have I just bamboozled us? We're fucking 30 on the ninth moon. Oh my god, we've been 30 for like nine months now. Well... That's the end of the foreign tour. Well done, team. Good job. Uh, <laughs> fuck's sake. On the plus side, we can spend this money on more useful stuff like, you know, a castle town to actually bring in some taxes so we don't have to keep sitting around waiting for some money. Um, oh, shit. We've already got a replacement, dude. Welcome. Tavaron. Uh, whatever the hell your name is. It's all the same name. It doesn't matter too much. And the son was born. What is he like? He's attractive and sickly. Right, of course, that we would get one fucking son that's genius, one son that's attractive. Sure. Daemalon. Terrible name. You're going to be called... Um... <laughs> I feel like I need like a randomizer, like a like a Valyrian name randomizer here. Tell me that's not the best name you've ever seen. Tell me. I mean, it, it is quite clearly. Uh, I thought that all the Valyrians have kind of like edgy names. Oh, what the fuck kind of name is Draconis or the Howling Bogs or like there's one that's the Demon Pass. Yeah, there it is, Demon Pass. These guys are really not thinking it through, so I, I figured we'd go for edgy names. Court physician Daryl is worried about my newborn son, Dark Steel Shadow Dragon Lord. Uh, of course he is. You must attempt to save my Dark Steel tr Shadow Dragon Lord. That's so good. Oh, shit. Well, there we go. House Blackfire was founded by Demon Blackfire after he was legitimized by his dying father and granted the sword Blackfire. So that's, like I said last episode, Aegon V's bastard sons there, legitimized on his deathbed. Apparently now trying to take back the throne. Fair enough. Um, long live the true dragons. Oh, we can say they're nothing more than bastards and exiles. I'm going to say, long live the true dragons. Good for you guys. You don't go for it. Are they actually going for it, though? Um, Aegon better steal. Not, not a Blackfire, unsurprisingly, but is head of the Golden Company, which were founded to try and put a Blackfire on the throne. In fact, if you play as a Blackfire in the Game of Thrones mod and take the Iron Throne, the Golden Company would be disbanded. So it's like the world's biggest mercenary band is, is gone just because he took the Iron Throne. A little shitty. Holy shit, he's got the sword. I want that. Um, steel artifact. Not there. Um, damn it, that's a real shame. Did I not install the artifact stealing mod? That's unlike me. Uh, apparently not. Right, let's do it. Let's join the Citadel so we can at least get something done with this character's life. Even though he's not going to be able to do much, we need to start founding this this High Valyrian dynasty. Pass some books down to them so that the uh, the Hermetic Society is hopefully going to be very useful for that type of thing. Um, my god, we don't have enough money for an observatory. I forgot what this game was like without all those extra buildings added. We're constantly poor. Now, one thing I do like about the scholarship folks in the Game of Thrones one is that you will be... Uh, like, people will come and offer to sell you books. Now, I mean, it's going to kind of ruin the whole observatory thing, but I'm going to take it. So, the Rogue Prince is added to our treasury. Does that... Oh, three artifacts of quality, too. Jeez, I didn't know that that was the prerequisite for that. Okay, fair enough. You know what? This will make it a lot easier in that case. This boy bought one of our slaves for 15 gold. Thank you very much. We've got the Rogue Prince that gives us Month of Prestige and its quality one. Well, that was an absolute waste of time. Speaking of books, let's compose a book. What do we want to talk about? A family history seems pretty appropriate. The intricacies of relationships. Oh, managing around. I've got to do it. 
I've got to do it. You guys know how much I love the book, How to Build a Well. It's one of the best books in the game. If we can get it, it's going to give us that massive build time reduction. So we're absolutely going to go for that one to help speed things up a lot. Oh, and we actually gained the charity trait as well. Oh, did that cost me any money? No, it didn't. Ironically enough, we gave some money away, but didn't lose anything. This character is famously charitable. Diplomacy plus three. My god, we're up to 20 diplomacy now. You madman. Even with the dis- Oh, so it just cancelled out the disfigured by Greystale, realistically. Jesus, she's 44 years old and we're having another chance at the godson. I can't imagine we're going to get it. But what we'll do next generation is try and breed strong into the family instead. Oh, God. Now we've got to spend some money on the book. Right. Every time we get close enough to build this goddamn observatory, they're taking my money away. Um, Except their marriage. I really don't care about imprisoning two random peasants here. Right. Wait for it. There we go. Right. Do it now before someone steals my money. Get out of here. Build observatory. Right. I'm joining this society and we're going to write a goddamn magnum opus. Lagon. My God. Another genius son. Wait. Was that all... Three? No, no, no. Two. Oh, well, three kids, actually. Three out of four ain't bad. In fact, that's incredibly good, considering it's got like a 15% inherit chance. Someone was born to Lord Preparian of Valerian Princess Shara Sea Star named Lagon. Um, how about, uh, Dark Edge, uh, D Dark Edge. Now they always have a Japanese name in it as well. I'm trying to think of all the edgy names. Uh, D Dark Edge Sasuke. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That one is inspired. You go well with it. Meet your brother, Darksteel Shadow Dragon Lord. A job well done. Improve relations with this random man. One of our only peasants there. Peasants, sorry. That's a slip of the tongue. Uh, one of our only vassals. Available because we have the country. Game one intrigue. Is that permanent? It must be permanent. So now we're at base seven? Oh, well, that's pretty good. That's actually insanely good. I wonder what strange things I will discover. There we go. Right. This is a great start. So we need, was it Erudite to join the Citadel? Let me just double check before I go for the wrong one. Um, scholar, astronomer, cartographer, traveler, linguist, erudite, lunatic, or mystic. Oh shit, wait, lunatic likes you join as well, that's pretty interesting. Uh, one of these must be true, has the trait erudite, or traditionally uses the maesters of the citadel, so we do need erudite either way. Um, so the only people who traditionally use the maesters are the people of Westeros, so unfortunately, it's basically all we can do there. One of the slaves has distinguished himself, so whenever we get this option, I mean, seeing as we're already taking part in slavery, I should probably go out celebrating too. Um... This dude, his talents will be useful here, and then we'll just sell him off immediately. We're not a kind person. Well, we are a kind person, but apparently, you know, even though we were a former slave, we are still... Maybe he's a Darwinist. Maybe that's what our guy is. You know, survival of the fittest. He fought his way out, and now it's up to these guys to do the same. Goodbye. Five gold. Well, this is exactly what we were looking for. This, this is where the new series really starts. Sacrificial burning as an offering to the Lord of Light will gain me much favor with him, according to the Red Priests. The Umbral Leaver's Eye would not like it, though, such as this dude. Sacrifice the Unbeliever. 10% chance of us getting the Transfire Test. That sounds incredibly good. Uh, we can burn some commoners from the dungeon. At which point we get Burn a Peasant, giving Revolt Risk, Tax Modifier, City Lover Size, Castle Lover Size, and Temple. So people just basically rebel. They refuse to do anything in favor of us. Or we can defy the Lord of Light's Cruelty and get minus 10. I mean, obviously we've got to sacrifice this dude. Um, all the non-followers of the Relaw at your court amongst your vassals decrease their opinion of you by 15 for 12 months. And... Change sacrifices to R'hllor by one. The fire magic begins. And of course we would get it first fucking time. Oh, this is it. Welcome to the series, everyone. The fire. It's so beautiful, so captivating. Its power consumes me. I am fire obsessed. And there it is. Was burnt alive as an offering to R'hllor by Lord Preparing of Illyria. Holy shit. And let's take a look at our kill list. Does it actually say, yeah, burnt alive? That's incredible. How do the stars move? I can't believe we got that immediately. That's insane. Learning plus two is obviously very, very good for when we write a magnum opus. 15 learning, I believe, is one of the prerequisites for the highest level magnum opus. Um, Relaw, opinion plus five. Same trait, opinion plus 15. So actually, if we do take Volantis, because... Oh man, they've reformed. Shit, that was quick. If we do take Volantis, they're all worshippers of the Lord of Light. They're going to have a much higher opinion of us. Observing the movements of the stars at night, you've begun to see some regular patterns and the fire. These observations, however, and fire... F uh, interesting, obviously. Gain diligent. Um... I don't know why he wouldn't be looking at the sun. This is good, though. This, <laughs> there's so much fire going on, I've just realised. We've got, like, the fiery heart, we've got the fiery flag, and then, of course, the fire obsessed as well. Master Harris has been a leal and able servant. Honestly, he actually has. He's got 17 stewardship. He's collected some tithes here and there. He's, he's a pretty good character overall, just skilled steward. Maybe we should bestow a title upon him. We give him 5 gold, 40 prestige, and he's given a coat of arms. He is also the ruler of our city as well, the city of Illyria. I'll bestow a noble title upon him. You're welcome, my good friend, Harris Dynebian. Goodbye, Caitlin. Another slave. And 40 gold for that one was pretty impressive. So, I feel like... Oh, hello. Oh, considering... 
Oh, that's cool. A renowned position there, Daryl. Thank you very much. You will keep me alive. And, speaking of which, she actually treated... Uh, why did I name you that? She treated our daughter. That's her name now. Daughter One. Uh, she treated Daughter One actually very well. So, you know what? You deserve to be caught. Sorry, Preparian and Superion has had Dragonbone bracelets added to their treasury. Why? And a Dragonstone bow? A, dr a Dragonstone bow? A Dragonbone bow? Why? Why can't we equip it out of interest? Um, oh, we must be a skilled fighter. Okay, we, m we have to actually be trained to use the bow. Understandable, really. Man, that is cool, though. Has that not fulfilled our... Oh, man, no, we need three artifacts and qualities, don't we? That's insane. Who died and gave us those? Was it uh, the guy in our court? The the Blackfire? My brother-in-law? No, no, no. It wasn't any of these guys. My brother-in-law is, is Hand of the King. Somebody came to our court, didn't they? And then most likely died. I've no idea which one. That... Was it this dude? Wouldn't have been this guy because we'd have got, you know, his fancy sword. Very weird. I wish I knew who died. Does this stack? Is it just a constant stacking event? So, because we've got the kind trait, we can just keep gaining intrigue forever. Oh, no, I don't want fat, please, God. Um, lose two martial, two diplomacy, two stewardship, gain 0 0.25 health. It's only temporary anyway. Um, man, that's... What kind of diet goes on for seven years, my dude? Okay, I guess we go for that one then. Man, that's a big hit for seven years, though. Oh god, here we go again. Five minutes later, we're burning yet another dude. Change sacrifices to Relore by 0 0.25. I don't know why the first one is worth so much compared to this one, but hey, that's fine. 100 piety per go as well is massive. Oh, shit. And there we go, right in queue, working in your reservatory. Lately, you've been frustrated by broken equipment, weeks on end of cloudy weather, and frequent interruptions by curious intruders and animals. Um, sure, we must persist the truth of the truth is out there. If we're getting stressful, it's not a big... It's too, not too much of a big deal anyway. Drunkard is minus one, stressful would be minus one, but... If it's, uh, if it's sort of a permanent thing that sticks around, if we even get it, we can always use the Maester Society to get rid of it. That was lucky. Holy shit, we got Diligent instead. Not only did we not get it, but we got the we got the best outcome. Man, that's massive. Thank God for that. Kind of ridiculous that we don't even have enough courtiers for a treasurer there. Probably because I keep burning all the ones that aren't our religion. Right, okay. Um, Employ a new courtier. Where the hell is the button? There it is. Right, so we want to go for a new Lord Treasurer. Please don't be shit. Oh, God. That's terrible. Relore, though. Hey, pretty impressive. Now, ideally, we probably don't want to convert Illyria, right? Because the characters that will spawn here will be uh, Valyrian just by by default. So more people to burn. It's not a bad idea. Anyway, um, what we want to do then is set up you and probably have you overseeing construction. Because we've got a lot of gold. Might as well invest it back into the capital here. So go and oversee construction. And let's build ourselves um, anything that gives tax at this stage, ideally. Small shipyard gives galleys. Man, we really can't build much. Ideally, we'd like to get the training grounds for the moral and the levy reinforcement rate. Yeah, it's not a bad plan. So that needs... Let me think. We need to get ourselves patrol posts. Don't we need guard stations for that? Yeah, we do. So we need patrol post level 237 gold. I'm going to save it for that then. And we'll, we'll try and get training grounds before anything else. God damn it. And because, of course, we are a society with a religious head here, or because we are a religion with a religious head, he's not happy with us uh, poking into things that are outside the realm. So I think... 33% chance of getting the trait Brave will piss off the religious authorities, but we are also fire obsessed, so they like us more anyway. Sod it. Man, I really wish we'd got Brave out that. That would have been. We'd have turned this dude into such an incredible character in like one episode by doing that. Don't get me wrong, he was a good character anyway, but getting like diligent, charitable, kind, fire obsessed, brave in one episode would be huge. Please, please hurry up with this event. I don't want to die before we've written a magnum opus. Oh, people like Gullible Fools are getting deceitful randomly. Okay, I'm glad I, glad I got that one. Oh god, here we go. So I know this is true because of what I explained earlier. This is just a, a canon, in-universe relationship. My wife, Shara, has stopped touching me or even looking at me. There's something not right about the way Shara and her half-brother, Lord Brynden, hold hands. But their long walks in the forest, it sickens me. Confront Lord Brynden. Ah. The baseborn brute, Lord Brynden, admits to having an affair with my wife, Shara. Sincerely asking for forgiveness and promising to stay away from my, li my wife. Denounce them both publicly. Do it. Break up with Shiera. I mean, she, she's my wife, so I can't. But, burn her. Burn her. Burn the wife. Burn the witch. Execute in prison. Tyranny by five. We have to call her for trial first. Right, throw her in the UBD out, then call her for trial. Because that gives her... Oh, man. We lose the trait. Wait, we're getting... What? She's been held in a dirty pitch black cell. That is unacceptable. Oh, because we are, we are her husband. So that's kind of understandable why we would get that event. Now if we call her for trial, because she's got no diplomacy, it'll go a lot easier for us. Well, she shouldn't have any diplomacy. Um, sorry? 
Diplomacy minus 20. She's still got 13. You're telling me she's got 33 diplomacy, you liar. Anyway, call her for trial. Let's see what we can do. And what is Earth? Now, I'm hoping we can burn her and get away with it. Because not only will that give us fear, but it will give us... Now, the way it works in Game of Thrones is if you burn somebody of noble blood, or king's blood is the most powerful, she's, you know, the descendants of many, many kings. She's House Targaryen, so burning her might give us a lot of magic. I disagree, I'll have her head. You're wrong. Gain arbitrary. I don't care. Burn her. Did you see that? Sacrifice the law increased by three. Slow down the clip. That's what you get for being an unbeliever. And that's what she gets for, uh, for betraying me. She deserves to be honored with the funeral. No, small private funeral. Burn her. Shara Targaryen's been sentenced to death and you have com commended, commanded, or commended, it's commendable. She be burned alive as a warning to your enemies. She's tied to a stake in a fire lit beneath her. Her screams went on for many minutes until she finally died. Everybody will be outraged, including, I assume, my own children. My son, who is High Valerian though, hey, it worked. Uh, Willful, genius. Actually, not that bothered. Oh, 21. Oh, you burnt my mother alive. It's only a minus 20, eh? Uh, I don't mind, though, because you are fire-obsessed. <laughs> I love that that dampens the blow somewhat. My court, courtier, Vigara, loser, trait, ambitious, not interested. I suppose I better take over the education then for my good son. A little bit annoying. Um, we do have two kids already to be educated, but you can go. So, assigned guardian. Look, Sasuke, uh, Dark Edge Sasuke. You get to go to literally anyone else. I really don't care that much. Look for patient, diligent. Uh, preferably a combination of both, but honestly, either is fine. Patient, kind, cynical. Cynical is kind of bad for an educator. You'll do. Oh, no, slothful, though. Fuck. Uh, Rael, fine. Educate my son. I don't really care that much. And then, Anus. <laughs> Classic. You get to be my new heir. Come to daddy. Right. So, I'm thinking we also buy a mask because we're hideous and we want to hide from our crimes. There we go. Uh, does that not give us... Oh, my God, it gives us diplomacy back. I should have bought this mask many, many years ago. So we are now arbitrary. Not ideal. We are now a tyrant. M how much tyranny? We've got level 3 tyranny. So it's... it's You get 5 for every level of tyranny. So because we've got 15, basic maths tells us that we've got level 3 tyranny there. Um, that's absurd. Holy shit. That's good. My lord, your son Anus is responding well to my tuition. He's <laughs> that fucking name every time is going to kill me. He has improved his skills and advancing his knowledge every day. Your humble servant, Deoril. Anus gains two diplomacy. Anus gains the trait humble. Thank you, Anus. You are you are a powerful Anus. Um, although he's got affectionate and willful, which are... Willful is okay. Ambitious, brave, authoritative are obviously very, very good. Affectionate, kind, and family person are good, I guess. In, in most situations. Content and trusting, though, terrible. I would rather not have affectionate. But because he has willful and affectionate, he's probably going to have a good diplomacy education in that case. Oh, there we go. This is cool. You're sure you've made a breakthrough in your studies? Yes, it can be otherwise. The Earth is round and it revolves around the sun. How little we know of the universe. Of course, we would put the sun, the flaming ball of fire, in the center. Reminds me of the head of my wife. I must publish my findings. Heretic. We will 25% chance we'll be known as either the wise, the able, the scholar, or priest hater. And we gain the trait astronomer. That's cool. Learning plus two, month prestige, same trait opinion. Um, or we can forego the prestige in the title and just take the trait astronomer. No, fuck the priests. Fuck them all. Now known as the wise. That was definitely worth it. Look at this dude. All right, and now. Oh shit, that doesn't give us erudite, you fool. How do we get erudite then? Hmm. I've been bamboozled. Now, to my knowledge, the only ways to get Erudite in CK2 is either as a child getting the idolizer childhood trait and having that turn into Erudite by obviously having a diligent or Erudite teacher, or being part of the Hermetic Society and picking Erudite as your focus. So we might be screwed here. Um, we can, however, join the Alchemist Guild because we're a lunatic and fire obsessed. Well, not lunatic in the, the CK2 sense, but we did burn our wife to death, so... We can join the Alchemist. You know what? That's a close second place. And honestly, this, this will help us bring in a lot of gold as well from the fake valuables. Plus, we can make wildfire, which I think suits our character a lot better. Thank you all for watching. A very productive episode today. I think we've burnt many, many people. Can we even see our sacrifices to R'hllor without... Oh, man, we can't see it unless we, I assume, go into Charinfo, which is a little bit of a shame. But, hey, at least we know that we have got ourselves some pretty good sacrifices there. I think we're... At like 4.25 or something like that. Not sure how relevant that is. I think it might affect whether or not you're chosen or favoured by R'hllor, depending on the amount of sacrifices. But hey, that's very cool. A lot of good progress in terms of our character. Not so much in the realm, but Lord Preparian has never been wiser or stronger or warmer than he is right now.
And let's give a shout out to those who will be burnt last on the funeral pyre, the patrons, for keeping this series possible, for funding Lord Preparing the Wise of Illyria's uh, crazy amount of wood and oil, which he gets to bring me, what does he say? Does he actually say bring me wood and oil? It's Lord of the Rings, the thing, you know, when he, when he burns, uh, burns Faramir alive in the pyre. I don't remember. Anyway, big shout out to Big Dick Timmy, Tom Terror 18, Harik, Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Loras, Haydock, Sidini, Necrofilin, Asuna Kirito, Facundo Vasquez, I Am The Lizard King, Josh Lynn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Palvis Presley, Logan Thorne, Conspired C. I'm going way too fast for this list. Holy shit, I need to speed up my... Uh, there we go, Orcs Wolf, Average Game of 419, Escape, Jackson Whitman, and Croesus. And it's, it's still in the wrong order. <laughs> and... Vacuous Buckers as well. Congratulations. You got the very rare after the credit scene. Well done. And a big shout as well to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Euphrates, Jimmy, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Doers, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Duran DeVries, Duncony217, Zet McDougal, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, Chris, Sir Thor the Swede, The Sage, Astro, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Eagle Kozak, Haji Dumar, Noah Gallimore, Panther Pearl, Alpha Scuff. Thank you all for your support. Do you work for Patreon? Do you want to let me know why my lists change fucking order every single time I check it? Let me know and, uh, and I'll get back to you.